Hi everyone, my name is Marian Liu. I'm a senior applying scientist at OCI Anomaly Detection Team. Today, I'll be giving a quick demo on leveraging OCI Anomaly Detection's univariate capability, which is now generally available. The use case of this demo involves identifying anomalies in network outbound traffic. As seen from the top graph, the training dataset contains network traffic sampled once every minute. It contains cyclical patterns with spikes and dips ranging between 0.1 to 1.2 megabits per minute. These are the normal values, while the graph below shows the inference dataset, which has unusual spikes in the network traffic. OCI anomaly detection can quickly identify this anomaly. After logging into the OCI console, you'll be clicking on the top left menu Browse to Analytics and AI, then under the AI services, go to Anomaly Detection. At the landing page, you will click Get Started to create a project. So project is used as a container storing different anomaly detection resources, such as the trained model, the data set, and the asynchronous jobs. Let's name our project as uni underscore demo underscore one, and then click create. Within a few seconds, the project will be created. Then we can proceed to click on this project. This will take us to the project resources page associated with uh, this project. As you can see, you will have the uh, access to the data assets, the models, and the async jobs. The next step is to create a data asset, which will be used for training the anomaly detection model. Our anomaly detection service currently support three different data source types, the Oracle object storage, the autonomous transaction processing, and a popular open source time series database called InfluxDB. Instead of creating a data asset separately, we will just use the create and train model here to um, create the data asset. And in this demo, I'll be using the Oracle object storage for showcase purpose. So we'll be navigating to the right location of the data and then hit create. So the data asset has been success successfully created. Then when you hit next, you'll have the access to choose the uh, model-related uh, parameters. As you can see, you can uh, decide on the target FAF, which is a target false alarm probability, the training fraction ratio, which is a percentage of data set used for training, the window size, which is the number of previous time stamp uh, the model uses uh, at each point for inference. If you just click automatic window size, which is leaving as default, our solution will be automatically choosing the window size for you. While in the algorithm hint, you basically have the option to choose if you want to stick with a univariate solution. So in our case, we just choose univariate one class SVM. While I left the other uh, parameters as default, we will go and click next. In this page, you would be reviewing the data information for training and uh, the model related information. Once you confirm, you will hit create and train. The model training usually takes a few minutes and in the interest of time, we will be using a pre-trained model in a different project. You can view the model training details by downloading the uh, JSON file here. And in the same time, you can also have like a, a brief understanding of the window size being picked. Note that if you see a window size which is of greater than one being chosen, when you supply the testing data sets for inference, you should make sure 
the number of rows is equal to or larger than the window size value. So let's say the window size return in this case is 48, then you should at least have 48 rows in the inference data set to get a non-rejection result. So let's click detect anomalies to uh, run through the detection workflow. So uh, after we choose the right data set, we also have the option to uh, tune the sensitivity parameter. So sensitivity parameter in this interface is a parameter ranging from zero to one that controls how sensitive the algorithm is outputting the anomalies. If we leave it as default, it will be 0.5. The higher the sensitivity parameter, the more anomalies our solution will be flagging. In this case, we'll just leave it as default and click detect. All right, so now we have the uh, result uh, which are rendered in the, uh, in the interface. So the first graph shows you the, uh, uh, the original data from the testing file the period which are being flagged as uh, anomalous. So as you can see, those two high peaks are correctly identified as anomalies. And underneath those two points, you'll see the estimated value which are pertaining to this point. So this will also be part of the uh, uh, JSON or CSV output uh, that you essentially get. Underneath uh, this graph, you'll have access to the anomaly score per signal uh, for the univariate data set. So this quantifies how severe a uh, given anomaly is. So for example, for the spike, which is up to 3.0 uh, megabits per minute, you see the uh, anomaly score being 0.91, which is very severe. While for the, uh, the second value being flagged as anomalous, it has a value of 0.54, which indicates it's uh, not as severe in this case. So you can leverage the anomaly score in your downstream process to take uh, adequate actions. This is the end of the demo. Thank you.